Hey guys, Nate Harris here with Stone River Outfitters. Thanks for joining me. In today's tutorial, I'm going to share with you how to tie an extraordinarily simple yet remarkably deadly little dry fly pattern that's proven surprisingly effective on rising trout from Maine to Montana and virtually anywhere and everywhere in between the 32nd CDC caddis. Proof positive that a successful fly need not be overly fancy or wildly complex in order to fool finicky fish into eagerly eating. Let's go ahead and give tying this tried and true favor to try. To begin, we'll first start by installing our thread neatly onto a standard length dry fly hook via a well placed jam knot positioned just behind our hook's downturned eye like shown. Once snugly affixed, we'll then rid ourselves of the excess thread tag's end with a quick crisp tug. Next, to prepare our fly's body, we'll select a sparse, tiny pinch of our favorite fine, semi-velvety textured dry fly dubbing, and we'll then roll that dubbing neatly around our thread, creating a nice, sleek, two or three inch long dubbing rope like shown. Once rolled, we'll next begin wrapping our dubbing rearward evenly along the hook shank, continuing in smooth, taut wound fashion until we've reached a comfortable stop located just above our hook's raised barb. Once there, we'll simply start dubbing forward again in smooth, deliberate, close wound fashion, creating as we go a handsomely tapered, taut dubbed body. Continuing until we've reached an appropriate resting stop located closely towards, but not crowding our hook eye. Once there, we're now ready to prepare our fly's wing. To do so, we'll grab in hand two high quality, full length CDC plumes, and with the feathers curved or naturally cupped sides facing purposely towards one another, and their tips neatly evened, we'll then position our CDC squarely atop our hook shank's front, and with our CDC wing held firmly in place with our offhand, we'll next make three or four semi-taut wound turns with our bobbin and thread around the paired stems and hook shank. Then, to proportion our wing appropriately, we'll next go ahead and carefully draw our paired stems forward together with controlled, forceful purpose, pulling our tented CDC wing neatly to shape, ensuring upon completion that our wing's rear tips come to a rough and even bend located just a short distance past our hook's rounded bend like shown. Once satisfied with our wing's measure, we'll then go ahead and bind our wing permanently into position using a few more well-placed snug wound thread wraps. Naturally, once secured, we're now free to quickly lift, then carefully trim away the forward protruding CDC stems neatly at their base. After building ourselves a nice, tidy, neatly tapered thread head, we're now able to install, just behind our hook eye, a handsomely placed, taut wound whip finish. Of course, once snugly whipped, we'll then go ahead and quickly snip clear the excess remaining tying thread. And with our thread cleanly removed, we'll at last end this fly like we do most with a nice drop of head cement jug neatly and evenly around our whip knot's entirety. Well friends, there we have it, the 32nd CDC caddis tied start to finish. While this remarkably simple and seemingly unsophisticated dry fly pales no doubt in glamour in comparison to the untold many more complex, more ornate, and more time intensive caddis imitations available out there today, I can promise you, if given the chance, the 32nd CDC caddis will prove, at least in the eyes of most any hungry, surface sipping trout, equally as appetizing if not more. Hey gang, thanks again for tuning in today. Please be sure when you use some time to check out our other Stone River Outfitters YouTube tutorials. Do please remember to visit us on the web for all your fly fishing and fly tying needs. And as always, tight wraps and tight lines to all.